Hey there, my fellow spacefarers, Radamon here. Thank you for tuning in to No Man's Sky, Episode 4, Space Anomaly. So what I'm looking to do is get, uh, I'm still on Awakenings, and I just want to get a little bit more um, antimatter so that I can refuel my warp systems. So one way to do this is to, uh, is to just wait for other ships to land at the station and to buy resources from those ships. Because usually chromatic metal is not sold on the galactic terminals. But I can sell the preserved insect foot for 130,000, which is not bad. I'm going to sell a lot of my silicate powder because I don't need two stacks of it. And here's the suspicious tech packets for 125,000. You can see why I wanted to sell them uh, instead of uh, also sell the silver and gold. Still not, uh, don't have enough, have an unlocked quest from them. There doesn't seem to be a lot of pilots coming in, so I actually might have to grind for the, uh, grind for the antimatter. Oh, I just heard a, a ship land. Two of them. Nice. Well, that doesn't help. They do have dioxide, which I'm going to buy. All of it. Um, and they have copper, which I'll buy as well. The dioxide allows me to refuel my life support, which was, almost just killed me, so... That, that's nice. And then the copper I can turn into chromatic metal. What about you? What do you have? The hydrogen jelly? That makes uh, life support stuff. Um, so, if you take a look here, the life support gels is dihydrogen jelly and carbon. So I could buy the dihydrogen jelly, but I don't think I'm going to in this case because I just bought all that dioxide, which does the same thing. Uh, so I definitely have the carbon for... and the copper. So yeah, I really have all the resources I need to make the antimatter, so I'm just going to warp back to my base because you can't deploy anything on space stations. I can't put down my, my portable refiner at the space station. So I'll warp back to the Kapan Grim base and refine myself a little bit of um, a little bit of carbon and a little bit of uh, chromatic metal for the antimatter that I need. So I put carbon in, and I put carbon in, and carbon plus carbon, carbon in the fuel plus carbon as the input is condensed carbon as the output. So I now have the 20 condensed carbon for the antimatter. I just need the chromatic metal. I'll probably um, have this portable refiner uh, refine me up more chromatic metal, because chromatic metal is one of those things that you're just going to need a lot of, because antimatter is made of chromatic metal. Um, so it's one of those, like, you can never have enough, like, chromatic metal. There, there's a bunch of resources like that. that you, you know, you can never have enough, like, oxygen and uh, cobalt and chromatic metal, and, because you, you use it, like, constantly. Um, and then the antimatter housing. Oh, I thought I had two of those. I do. Here we go. So there's a second warp cell. And now the hyperwarp has a charge of uh, a third. I thought I sold these. Maybe I didn't. 
which should allow me to jump. I should just keep doing it, but I'm bored already, so. I'm eager to get the awakening done. So from this teleporter, I can also go to the station, straight to the station. Uh, the advantage of doing that is um, I won't have to use my launch thrusters. Because wherever you portal to, uh, your ship just magically follows you around. And if I took off from my base that's on that planet, uh, I don't have a landing pad, so that I have to use fuel for the portal. Space magic, yep. I'm going to pick the spot that I jumped to. So there's different types of systems around. Um, some require uh, certain engines to get to. So there are yellow stars, and there's different types. There's G and F yellow stars. Uh, and if we click on them, we can see how many planetary bodies this is. So for instance, this one has four planets, two moons. That's an E class. There's an F class, but it's too far. And then uh, the ones that um, that I can't warp to because I don't have the proper warp drives, like this one, uh, tend to be more hostile. The, the, the stars that you have access to at the start of the game are the more gentle ones, for the most part. So, because we are looking for paradise planets, uh, I'm just going to head over... Yeah, let's head here. Maybe not a Gek-controlled one. Although everything around here seems to be Gek, just by chance. Gek. Gek. Why, why does Gek own everything around us? Oh, well that one is not Gek, but it's too far away. Fine, whatever, another Gek planet. Another Gek solar system. So this has six. That works. And there are filters. Yeah, there's filters for... Uh, for red and blue stars and but I don't have the engines for it so there's no point in filtering for it all right here we are in a new system and this one was already discovered by another player I was not the first one here Starship monitoring systems report. Guidance system malfunction. Searching for other routes. Obtained. Destination in 161616. Accept new guidance. Sure. Is this online? So, it's online, but I'm on single player mode. So there's not going to be other players, but... Even though I'm single player, there's still discoveries made by other players. So... This solar system was not discovered by me, it was discovered by someone else. Oh, haha! I thought it was on the planet I was near. Nope, it's on this totally separate one. A bladed moon. Well, this moon looks sufficiently creepy. 
You get to name stuff you discover, right? Yes. So these are knowledge stones, which will teach you new words. And depending on who owns the system, right now I'm in a Gek system, so we're learning Gek words. There's Viking and Corvax as well. They're other species. This structure is unlike anything I've encountered in my journey so far. Everything about it seems so obviously alien, so obviously out of place. As I stare at it, words form themselves in my mind, a strange fragment of broken speech. Is it traveler? Is it friend? I'm a traveler. It feels strange, responding to questions I am unsure that I am being asked. But something has clearly taken notice of my reply. I am overwhelmed by a sense that something has awoken, that someone is watching me. Well, I mean, there's literally a sentinel right there. <laughs> it forms another question. Is it first? Is it last? I am last. I do not know how I am being spoken to. The monolith is ancient, and I cannot escape the feeling it has asked these questions many times over. It asks again. Have they seen the Crimson Eye? Has the Crimson Eye seen them? Both. Likelihood of anomaly exceeds safety parameters. Breach detected. Alert. The boundaries fall, the walls collapse, your universe awaits. Find us, Traveler. And I was just given a warp cell. Uh, where'd I park? Um, so yeah, you can name star systems, planets, moons, plants, animals, bases, um, frigates. There's a bunch of stuff to name in this. Put that warp cell in. Oh, I can't take off. I don't have thrust fuel. So metal plating and dihydrogen. Uh, let's whip that up. Is that giant moths? Uh, looks like it. They're V. Nepopolum, who eat poo. They're skittish, orthogonal, and they have gentle souls. So they're like winged dung beetles, I guess. There's a lot of them. There are like all sorts of swarms around here. Alright, that was enough resources to give me launch fuel. Oh, no, no, I just made the wrong thing. Well, I might as well make life support jelly then. Um, metal plating, and then I need more dihydrogen. So, 16 more to get off this planet. If you're wondering, you, you do uh, get unlocks to make all of this way more efficient later on. So better launch systems, better engines, better efficiency for everything. That way you're not... Uh, and then also easier ways to resource farm. Wow. Yeah, let's get this giant tendril. Well, uh, life support jelly is like... Uh, it's just like... Uh, you can think of it as life support battery. Yeah. 
And up. Okay. I think we are done with awakenings for now. So, uh, you all wanted me to work towards getting a f freighter. And I'm going to do it the, the freeway. The, the first thing I wanted to do before that, though, is to make sure that there's no lush planets in this solar system. Because the main goal, of course, is to survey uh, three lush planets or three paradise planets and then to potentially colonize one of them. Hey, Scav Mechanic, thank you for the resub. A full year, too. How's it going? Uh, what have you been streaming lately? So if you're wondering, the reason I want the freighter, or the, um, yeah, the freighter is because uh, it allows you to survey planets, like, way faster. Alright, I'm gonna say that there is no habitable planets on this even though I might not have hit one of the moons for scans. I'll just hold the plug on that. So here's a Corvax system with, uh, one, two, that's full. Five planets, one moon. So the, kind of the way to find habitable planets, ideally, is you want solar systems that are full. Not only because that each each additional planet in the solar system increases your chance that it's like lost your paradise, but also that if that is where you settle, um, more planets gives you a wider range, generally speaking, a wider range of, of uh, resources. Because each planet will have a subset of, of resources that it offers up. Uh, so here's a lush planet, but it has aggressive sentinels, so that's a no-go, unfortunately. And th that's pretty typical. Generally speaking, the, se the sentinels without revealing too much, are robots that are designed to protect the solar system, or to the universe, rather, and um, the more resource uh, lush a planet is, the more likely they are to have robots guarding those resources. So it's very difficult to find unguarded uh, planets that are lush and not, you know, swarming with... Uh, Stupid sentinels. Incoming transition, uh, transmission, you are not alone. Please identify yourself. Sure. You left me, why did you? I don't understand. Of course you'd say that. Of course you'd, just like the others. Ask about the others. There is no reply. The communicator falls silent, though the channel remains open. I just received additional cords. This this is still like part of awakening. Um, that I'm uh, I'm doing, you know, as a as a result of of also looking for freighters. So what I'm trying to do um, for the freighters is every now and then, like once an hour or so, there will be a fight where pirates attack a freighter. And I'm trying to find that event. But, uh... Let's continue awakenings. Am I going to do much trading this run? Uh, probably not, no. This is a role-playing one where I'm trying to found a colony. It's all explained in the details. Oh, this planet. Is this... A oh, is this the lush planet with the sentinels? Hold on, let me scan it. No, it isn't. It's a bleak moon. It's a hot one. Um, and that's a toxic one.
Whoa! Came in a little hot. Those are some freakishly large creatures. Like flying space cows. So I'm looking for the point of interest that uh, my map directed me towards. It's going to be a lot easier to see now that this storm is cleared. Oh, well, that's a busted ship. Uh, you know what? Let me land near it, if I could not drunkenly fall. A really good way to get better ships is to ship swap. That's not what I'm aiming necessarily to do, but I'm definitely going to check it out all the same. So this is a C-Class ship. Um, so if I claim this ship, which I can claim it for free, um, it has a bunch of broken parts, which would need to be repaired for me to properly use it. So here is the comparison between my starting ship, the Radiant Pillar, and it. Um, I'm going to claim it, but I'm not going to repair it up. Because it's busted to hell and not great. But yeah, I can sell it, and that's exactly why I claimed it. Claiming and selling ships is not necessarily the most min-maxed way to make money, but it is a pretty effective way to make a lot of money. Alright, repair this uh, distress beacon. Oh, and there's also a buried uh, tech module right here, too. Oink. Oh, this is actually where the quest was, too. Sweet. So repair that with sodium and chromatic metal. No problem. There are no signs of life. There's only the static of a broken communicator. Whatever message was once here has been scrambled beyond recovery. All I extract is the pilot's name, Artemis. Whoever they were, they are long gone. The only other uncorrupted data is a set of plans an upgrade for my mining beam. The advanced mining laser. So in order to make an advanced mining laser, which allows me to mine uh, bigger, better things, I need a hermetic seal, carbon nanotube, and wiring loom. Wiring loom is something that you cannot make. You only buy. FYI. A hermetic seal is condensed carbon. I have 28 out of 30. But there doesn't seem to be a condensed carbon node around me, so I'm going to make my own. Done. <laughs> That's the Hermetic Seal. And then the last two wiring looms I will have to buy at... Well, it's possible to find them in these boxes. But, like, quite unlikely. Probably not the right way to go about it. Um, so, buying it at the, uh, at the hub. It's going to be a lot more efficient. Priest Entity Nada. Artemis Entity, we received your signal. Is it first? Is it last? Time for truth. You have their signal, but you're not Artemis Entity. Tell the truth. Your signal is familiar to Nada. We've been in contact before, I think. This would be a good time to come aboard, yes? A proper introduction to our home. So this is more of sort of the main quest line, um, but it's one of those things like, in order to have enough unlocked to you, 
it helps to do, uh, but this is pretty much going to be the last that I do. So this um, space anomaly is one that it's a space station that you can essentially summon whenever you want. It's also a really good get out of jail free card if you're being pursued by spaceships and they're going to blow you up because you can just summon this space anomaly and like board it to evade combat, space combat that is. Um, this also happens to be the hub to launch multiplayer missions. This is the Nexus. I won't be doing any Nexus missions in this uh, stream, but here is here. Oh, it's not going to let me do it because I haven't gotten far enough in the game, but that's where you would pick up um, Nexus missions. And then there's a bunch of NPCs, some of which give you really powerful items and unlocks and stuff like that. And then there's an entire library of stuff that you can unlock over there, which is what I needed access to to be able to like build that post and like. But here is Nada. I am Priest Entity Nada, Divergent Corvax. Uh, welcome to our anomaly. So the Corvax is sort of like a hive-minded robotic AI. There's a, a lot of backstory between the three species, the Corvax, the Gek, and the, the Viking. I haven't met any Viking yet. Um, I'm not going to reveal any of that so as to not uh, spoil the main storyline, because I'm not planning on playing the main storyline in the stream. But it is worth noting that he is divergent, that he is not connected to the other Corvax. Our home is here. Uh, our home here is pleasant, yes? Apollo's own design. A perfect bubble beyond the Sentinels, beyond the vengeful Corvax. Nada watches time come and go. Ask about Artemis. A tribal entity, perhaps they are known to you. I do not know their number. Nada does not care to think about iterations as numbers. They were lost to us, highly improbable. Our anomaly is lost to the Sentinels, but none should be lost to the anomaly. The Corvax watches me. There is a patient, uh, patience and organic tilt to the way they hold their metal shell. Um, ask about Nada. Ask about himself. Uh, Nada awoke with the death of Corvax Prime. Could not understand why such things happen. We are not alone. Now I am divergent. The convergence does not see through my eyes. Nada is not alone anymore. Nada is with Polo Friend. Now many other friends visit. Our convergence is small, but Nada happy. Not as carapace pulses with a gentle light. There is something familiar about them. Ask about Polo. Polo friend found Nada. Found my signal. Nada is safe. Now Nada finds other signals, makes others safe. The station has been calling to me ever since I woke up on the planet. Perhaps it called to Artemis as well. Ask about the space station. Beyond what is outside, our anomaly wanders free, like Nada to observe, to search. The Sentinels, the Atlas, they do not care for this place. I feel their eyes hunting us. Nada watches me, judging my reaction as they speak. Speak to Polo Friend Traveler. Perhaps they might know more about missing Artemis. They perceive things more clearly than Nada. Friends everywhere. If only you knew where to look. Friends in all shapes, all sizes, all places. Artemis Friend? You are where they should be. Does not seem possible, but all things are possible. Such is the universe. We will find them, no doubt. There is always a signal, always a trace. Our home will see to it. Uh, our home will see to it. When you leave, you will not be where you were. You will be closer. Or maybe not. Discovery is exciting, yes? Before you leave, perhaps spend some time with other friends? We all help each other uh, here. So he wants me to visit Helios, the grand an uh, analysis over yonder. Ah, young one. You who still roam the boundaries of this universe, how I envy you. My time out in reality has long passed, but I miss it greatly. Perhaps you might help an old soul and share the findings that, uh, that you've seen. I yearn for the stars, the glory of discovery. I give my planet data. Thank you, little one. You have no idea what this means to me. Please take these nanites. They are nothing, but they are all I have now. So gave me 150 nanites for that. Uh, the tech researcher, Sir Celine, she's over here.
And in this room here is pretty much where you're going to unlock all of technology. There is ship tech, um, construction research tech, suit tech, tool tech, uh, syn uh, recipes for uh, synthesis, and then um, exosuit tech. So this is like the major tech hub. So here's Celine. Traveler new, your suit is an extension of yourself. Let me aid you. So here is the exosuit upgrades. I already have life support, hazard protection, oxygen recycling, jetpack. Um, I don't find the translators useful. Basically what they'll do is they'll translate some of the words that you see, but you don't learn them. They're just like temporarily revealed to you. There's has gauntlets, which allows you to pick plants that are hazardous, like the, uh, the frost wort that we found before. There's the personal refiner, which is a, a really powerful tool uh, that allows you to have it built in into your suit refinery. So you don't actually have to place it on the ground. It's built in. It's really nice. Uh, trade rocket, which allows you to load things into a rocket and just sell them. Um, but it doesn't give you full price, but it is nice if you're on a planet that is full of treasure. It allows you to not have to leave the planet or, or store everything. You can just keep launching trade rockets into space. There are... Um, the shields for different types of uh, hazards, so fire, frost, toxic, and radiation. There is the aeration membrane for breathing underwater. The shield lattice for increasing your hazard protection battery. Uh, the auctionary router for uh, efficient oxygen usage. Then the jetpack research. Um, over in the construction research panel. There is, so these are different types of um, construction buildings. So there's cylindrical prefab rooms, kind of like um, Subnautica, I guess. Uh, so you can choose what kind of buildings you want. You can do like rectangular non prefab and really design your own structures or use the prefab rooms where you just place things inside prefabs. But you can see the prefabs have a lot of choices like biodomes and frames and foundations and the like. Small prefabs for smaller rooms. Here's the technology module, but as you can see, this list is considerably larger than what was on the um, the small little thing at my base. So you can see the base only had like these items, uh, but this expands to oxygen harvesting, uh, uh, anonymous or autonomous mining, atmospheric harvesting, um, large refinery, antimatter reactors, livestock feeding, uh, larger refineries, and so on and so forth. Um, transports. So this is like exocrafts. So you start off with a roamer, but you can get um, a whole bunch of different types of exocrafts. So nomads are like fast skimmers. Minotaurs are like giant robots that, that can mine and whatnot. Nautilus is for underwater. Pilgrims are... Um, I haven't really found a use for pilgrims, to be honest. And then Colossus are just like giant exocraft. Uh, building underwater. Underwater bases. Uh, decals, posters, decorations to spruce up your homes, illumination for your homes, industrial uh, modules, which are also very important. So we've got batteries, solar panels, electromagnetic generators, gas extractors, mineral extractors, switches and wires, agricultural, if you want to do farming. So there's hydroponic trays and larger hydroponic trays, and then you can farm fungal clusters, frost work, gramma weed, you know, so on and so forth. And all of these are, generally speaking, they're um, reagents to make important stuff. So for instance, frostwort is an ingredient to make glass. So if you want like biodomes, you collect frostwort. There's other paths to get glass. You can you can smelt um, silica dust, like sand or mining debris, but like, you know, all of these lead to other things. And there's also like nip nip, which is illegal. Um, then the timber structures that you saw before and the roofing, stone walls, stone roofing, alloy, alloy roofing, primitive shapes if you want to like put shapes outside. Storage units. So these storage units are accessible everywhere. So if you have a storage unit in your base, let's say you get storage unit zero in your base, and you also have a freighter, your storage unit zero in your freighter is going to be the same. So it's like a universal storage system. Um, what does it want me to talk to next? Oh, return to Nada. But I'm just going to go through some of the other tech trees, just so you understand them real quick. So for ships, um, the teleport receiver allows you to transfer items between your inventory and your ship's inventory a little bit further. Uh, we've got better, more efficient uh, pulse drives, which is like traveling in the solar system. We've got more efficient hyperdrives and hyperdrives that allow you to visit different types of stars. So blue stars, green stars, red stars. Um, 
scanners. So this one will tell you the economy of a solar system that you haven't yet entered. Same with conflict level. And then cargo scan deflector allows you to smuggle a little bit more effectively where you can sometimes jam the scans from smugglers. Um, improve launch systems, improve shields, and then different weapons. So I start off with a photon cannon, which is trash. And then there are, um, uh, this is a photon cannon upgrade. There's rocket launchers, phase beams, positron ejectors, infra knife accelerators, and cyclotron ballista. So those are the types of weapons that you can get. There's a few other types of weapons, but they're not something that I'm going to be able to show in this playthrough. Um, for the most part, there are living ships, organic ships that have their own unique uh, weapon subtype. But uh, it takes like um, it takes like a week of real life time to be able to make your first living ship. So it's again not something within the scope of the stream. Um, extra crafts. I don't find myself using extra crafts very often. There's a few that are useful, like the Minotaur, but uh, the different upgrades to extra crafts, which is going to be remarkably similar to your own ship, where you have um, the Minotaur upgrades and mining laser upgrades and so on and so forth. Uh, so this synthesis laboratory allows you to figure out how to make certain items. So like, for instance, we needed microprocessors. So here's how to make a microprocessor from scratch, which is uh, chromatic metal and carbon nanotubes instead of having to buy it. And here are all the things that you can learn with nanite clusters. So Atlas passes allow you to unlock uh, certain locked items. Uh, we also have, this is like underwater vehicle fuel. Unstable plasma is like weapon fuel, well, certain types of weapons. And then all of these are used to build certain things uh, as well. Then you have valuable products. So some of these valuable products are required to build colonies. Like um, every now and then you'll have colonies that call for like things like glass or living glass or circuit boards, polyfiber, so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah. And then last but not least, the multi-tool. So first, I'm going to check what tool they have here. It's a C-class. That kind of sucks. And multi-tool research. So you've got uh, your basic bolt caster and bolt caster upgrades. Then you have the plasma launcher, blaze javelin, which is kind of like a energy sniper rifle, a scatter blaster, which is a shotgun, pulse splitter, which is like a SMG maybe, neutron cannon, heavy hitting, uh, combat scope, which allows you to zoom. It's not real zoom. It's just kind of like zoom plus. I don't know. It's not great. Co cloaking device, which is a temporary way for you to cloak yourself from enemies. A uh, voltaic, uh, voltaic amplifier, which allows you to do more damage to stun targets. Um, a better scan upgrades and survey device, which is particularly useful later on. And then better drilling devices as well uh, to be upgraded. So those are all the, not all the upgrades, but that's like many of the ones that you're going to be able to get, or at least all the ones that you're able to get from the anomaly, I should say. All right, and back to Nada. Nada and Polo drift between worlds and worlds. There are many. Have you seen them, traveler friend? Nada wishes they could, Nada regrets much. Ask what to do. Traveler. Entity is free to make their own path. Find Artemis Entity, explore with others, travel to great sites. Proceed as you will, Traveler Entity. We will aid you, others will aid you also, even if you seek the Crimson Lair. All right, so I'm not even gonna continue that uh, conversation. I'm just gonna back out of it. Even though it doesn't really let me. So taking a look now at the log, here are the primary missions of investigating the space anomaly. Uh, the Atlas Path and searching for Artemis. But then there is also exploration guides for surveying the planet, uh, the solar system that you're on, uh, recovering more information from your base computer, uh, community research, which I'm not even going to touch on. And then this is just the last thing that I I was installing the advanced mining laser. I'm gonna, I can just unpin that if I want because I, I, I didn't finish. Uh, so what I'm hoping to do at this point is to uh, so it's it's to get myself a, a, a freighter, but in order to get a freighter, I'm going to need to win some space fights. So I think my first order of business is to get a better 
ship. Because I'm not... One of the more difficult things to do in this game is to win, like, space fights with a whole lot of enemies. So I'm definitely going to want a better ship, because the starter ship is crap. Um, you can tool it so that it's better, but it, it will always be somewhat crap. Thank you for tuning in to No Man's Sky, which originally streamed live on Twitch August 19th and August 20th. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any feedback, you can let me know there as well. But please keep in mind that this was a mini series, so all of the content has already been recorded and changes cannot be made. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to help to influence the games that I play, please join me on Discord. A link to Discord can be found in the description of this video and also on my website. Thank you so very much for watching, and a special thank you to all of my Twitch subscribers and Twitch viewers that turned out to the marathon, my Patreon patrons, and viewers like you that made it all the way to the credits. Thank you so very much. Hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow space explorers.